We interrupt your regularly scheduled password for uh, Lion King on the SNES. The That's definitely <laughs> what we're playing right now. That's the vibe I'm getting for a little bit. What, what, what hit me when I launched this? I'm we're very playing... interested to see to see how you feel about it. <laughs> what does that mean? That if, if Lion King is your vibe going in, you are uh, you are in for a surprise, my friend. I imagine so. I'm just saying that this title screen <laughs> has a certain <laughs> like like jangly retro video game vibe that is not what you get from most furry visual novel start screens. Yes. It's a very particular vibe. <laughs> I've never quite heard this music before in a free visual novel. <laughs> anyway, we're playing No Way Home because our friend Ka, who is our dungeon master over at Noel Playing Games and ran all of Cape Escape and so on, and also made me and Toaster's uh, 3D models and so on, uh, has a whole visual novel that came out on Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so we're yeah. gonna, we want, and so I. We're, I'm once again splitting the furry visual novel schedule for a bit between the two games. And uh, also we're playing a game that's not done, but for a series. And then we'll, we'll, it'll just stop when we're out of content and we'll come back when more comes back. Because uh, I make the rules and I can break them whenever I feel like it. And also we're supporting our friend. So we want to play their, we want to play his game. That's, it's nepotism. Except for, I think nepotism's family. Wait. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Ka, Ka, Ka is a very multi-talented person. Uh, they, they do many, many cool things all the time. Uh, but that, uh, No Way Home is interesting because it's been this, this project that he's been working on for a while. And he kept talking to me about it and was like, yeah, I'm working on this. It's a thing. It'll come out eventually. Waiting on assets. And then just suddenly one day he just dropped a build in my Discord and was like, hey, can you beta test this for me? And I was like, what? <laughs> Where did this come from? So I've, I've read a little bit of this before. I don't think it's everything that's in this build. I think this build has content that even I haven't seen, but uh, I thought it was very impressive, especially in the alpha that I saw. Uh, and I think people are gonna like it, but it, I think it's worth noting that Ka wrote and programmed this entirely himself and the only things that he didn't do are like the music himself and then obviously the art um but yeah Ka is incredibly multi-talented Ka is the lead programmer on our newly announced visual novel cape escape development hell as well <laughs> So there's, there, Ka is balancing 400,000 projects at any moment. So that's one of the things that's really surprising to me about the the quality and the timing of this release is that on top of everything else he's doing, he managed to get this out. So that's incredible to me. And the art's by Dead Stray Bear, who's really good at this. It's always it's always a treat when you already knew the, about the artist before the visual novel. You're like, wait, they did the, they're doing yes. this? Shit. Do you wish to enable sexually explicit visuals? No. Thank you. There's a lot of sexually explicit visuals in the uncensored version. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw that. I saw that. I think those the sprites have a lot of casual nudity in general and so on too. They do, yes. And that's just a whole thing. So, and because we haven't necessarily said it yet, but it's not too late. Adults only NSFW adult game for adults. Don't play this during your business meetings. That's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, or while driving a forklift. It's not safe. Mm-hmm. I'm such an idiot. That's the first thing that comes to mind as I find myself facing oblivion. It's so empty. So cold. There's just... <clears throat> there's just nothing. Forever. Is this what it's always going to be like? There really isn't anything that comes after? Well, at least I can hear myself think. Wait, that's not a good thing, is it? Just alone with my thoughts for eternity. Now this is hell. Or Necroscope. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I read wake Necroscope. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Please, wake up. Oh, thank goodness. You can't do this. The voice pleads, tearfully, breaking and trembling. He sounds hoarse from sobbing. 
I don't recognize him. But he's my only lifeline to the world of the living. Please. I feel like I'm being pulled towards him when he speaks, somewhere far, far away. Compared to this vast emptiness, it feels like a whole other world. You can't leave me. It feels like a deep pang for compassion for whoever this is. I don't feel like how this is almost like direct. <laughs> one of these characters sounds like they're directly quoting one of the most traumatic moments in a visual novel. <laughs> I don't want to leave either. I'm not ready to go. But what can I do? I focus with all my might, trying to do something, anything, to show that I'm here. With all the effort I could muster, I managed to pry my eyes open just a sliver. Just enough for a blurry, unfocused glimpse of him. He gasps, eyes shining and full of tears. And I feel his grip on me tighten. As I lay eyes upon him, I feel a deep longing that I can't fully explain. I don't know who he is, but he's so gentle, so tender. I feel him clutching my hand, telling me everything's going to be okay. I can barely make out what he's saying, but, he ju but just hearing his voice is soothing. I try to respond to him, but all that comes out is a weak, breathy gasp. Save your strength. Just stay here with me, please. You'll get better. You will. We'll go back to the village. We'll rest. We'll have soup. Soup? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Just like in Liar, soup. You get the soup, soup. rag. No. <laughs> I was in a completely different headspace. <laughs> Good soup. I have no idea what he's talking about. Does he know me? This feels wrong. His voice breaks as if as his tears return. It's not fair. Can't help but agree. I want to console him. I want to tell him not to cry. I don't even know him, but it's obvious how much pain he's in. I want to stay here, with him. Why do I feel this way? He's a complete stranger. I can't think straight. My eyes falling shut. I just can't keep him, them open any longer. Darkness reclaims me as I hear his panicking shouting. No, you need to stay awake. But I can't respond. I can't stay with him. The world goes quiet. I feel time slip away from me. Damp falls upon my body. A soft warmth caresses me, but then it's gone. Chill sets in, bitter and biting. Pressure around my limbs, around my throat. Dragging. The smell of noxious chemical fumes. Soft muttering. Chanting? It's too much. And then? Nothing. Hi? You are in a forest. A deep one, hazy and hard to place. Colors you've never seen before shimmer through the air. It hurts to look at them. The trees around you bend and sway in ways that don't feel natural. They bow to form archways, leading you to onto a path. You follow the trail, unsure and unsteady, but driven by duty. You have to find him. Hello. Also, just a very deliberate shift from first person to second person. Third yeah. Person? Second person. Yeah. Yeah. Second person. <laughs> I was like, hang on a minute. The clearing you emerge into looks unfamiliar. Your path becomes less certain. Unsettling lights of those same unusual colors flicker and dance in the canopy above, 
lighting your way in place of stars. Dense underbrush shifts and crowds around you, making you feel surrounded. Quickening your pace, you feel pricks of pain as the dense brambles slice at you in your haste. Unearthly sounds warble through the dense tangle that envelops you. Whatever lives down here can't be friendly. You feel your heart racing in your chest. He could be in danger. A particularly overgrown piece of vegetation looms menacingly before you. With your vision blurring, its shape resembles that of a towering beast. Your breath catches in your throat, afraid to make a sound. Pinpricks of illumination from the ghostly lights above shine through it. Or are those eyes? It shifts and turns as you approach. Or was it always facing that way? You can't tell. A howling wind passes through. The, tree, <clears throat> the trees shake like the rattle of bones. It's not safe here. You run. But not far. The undergrowth trips you up. It feels as if it lashes out and ensnares your feet, bringing you low so you can't escape. You feel the wind knocked from your lungs as you land hard. Something's wrapped around you, preventing you from reclaiming any air. Looking up, you're met with dozens of eyes sprouting from the thick, tangled brush that coats the ground. They stare at you, unblinking. They know you're not meant to be here. Hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> you're too slow, too stupid. They've just been waiting for you to fall. You feel the roots that surround you tug you slowly down into the earth. They suffocate you, wringing the air from your lungs and the life from your body. The more you struggle, the tighter they bind you. As they close in above you, to seal you into this grisly casket of vegetation, the last thing you see before they fully block out the light is those eyes staring down at you. I bolt awake, launching myself upright in a cold sweat and gasp for air. We're deliberately switching back again. Mm -hmm. Also just a very different style each time, too. Question is who you is. Like, like whether he's, like... It's just talking about how he's just per perceiving himself differently, or if it's genuinely a different perspective. But that... Right, well, that requires explanation. Which is that, uh... In the background of my mind, I had certain, uh conclusions I was developing towards during the previous uh, at Astra scene where uh, I was like did because I, I, I don't know if this is an isekai or a TF game or if it is just like you just are a knoll uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the I just know that one of the first images is him seemingly looking surprised at himself uh, in the promotional materials so I thought that maybe someone is brought into a knoll world and as a knoll or something like that and uh the introduction was us uh th thinking that we died and then awakening in what is uh, funnily enough also a dying body but we don't know the bot we don't know who we are or where, or where we are or who that person is so that makes yeah. me wonder whether or not uh s some knoll character is dying does die and is replaced by a different uh, consciousness that then has to live on and, and disappoint the person who and frustrate the, and confuse the person that uh, thinks that the person that they cared about is still alive or if it's amnesia like you suffer head trauma and then you don't remember who you are or, and, and so on and that's its own problem and so on anyway I just have a bunch of different things I'm playing with there <laughs> so, so when I was already in that headspace a little bit, uh, having the you vision, uh, then has this question of like, is this is this just a different perspective during dreams, or is this like a second consciousness in this narrative? I'm alive. Probably. Okay, that's a start. 
I tried to get my breathing under control. That nightmare was really intense. Looking around, I strained my eyes to get a good measure of my surroundings. It seems like some kind of hut. From the sounds of birdsong outside, it's out in the wilderness, maybe? Rough, unfinished walls and thatched roofing above, and all manner of simple tools and containers scattered about. Light streams in from behind a curtained opening, illuminating some kind of kitchen or workshop along the far wall. Breathing in, I feel the harsh sting of chemical fumes in my lungs, but it feels like I've been suffused in it for quite a while already. I must have been here for... how long? As my bleary eyes scan back across the room, I'm startled when I notice a figure slowly creeping up from the shadows. Blech. Slowly. The figure scampers closer with frightening haste. I love the little the effects. <laughs> it's the like little a little attention to things. detail thing. Yeah, that like very few furry visual novels take advantage of. And I think it it helps deal with some of the um it helps deal with some of the, the static nature of sprites. I know this is something that a lot of people don't agree with me with, um, but I've always found, this is my hot take, is that I've always found visual novel sprite work to be kind of um, supplemental, for lack of a better word. Like when I'm reading a visual novel, I'm looking at the text. I, I honestly, past the very first time I see a sprite or an expression, they kind of just fade into the background for me. I don't pay attention to them. And that's one of the reasons why I like like novel mode, visual novels so much is that like, I'm just reading the text. So like literally having the sprites in the background, not take up most of my screen space when they aren't really that changing or dynamic um, has never been a downside for, for me and for the way that I read visual novels. So whenever I see visual novels that actually do little animations with the sprites. And I don't just mean changing expression, but like placing them in dynamic locations around the scene and like shrinking or warping or changing their perspective so that you can tell like who's standing in the background or like utilizing the environment and stuff. That's always so interesting to me. And I think it helps fill that niche that a lot of visual novels don't go for because the presentation of visual novels as just like sprites standing around, I think is just kind of lacking dynamism and and uninteresting especially in the cases where it's like an adventure mode visual novel where seemingly the sprites are meant to be the primary reason why you're looking at the screen and they get the most screen space but most most games just don't take advantage of that screen space so when, when i saw that the sprites in this were animated i was like this is cool this is like a neat little thing to do um to do like that and like take advantage of the whole stage so to speak that that the game presents to you yeah, it's an interesting thing to just incorporate just to have more actually happen and so on. I do, I do look up a fair amount when I'm playing uh, vision novels and look at the characters and see the expressions changing throughout the, uh, the things. But I especially mm -hmm. like it when you have an ensemble on screen and they all have a variety of different reactions to different moments. Yeah. You have the like the survivor that's my fetish meme playing out in real time basically <laughs> like that's, yeah. it's, that's, it's fantastic seeing very different reactions from different characters and so on. But yeah, I've been, I've been, I, so many games were so static for so long that I was genuinely shocked when I played some games that pulled weird tricks and yep. it was like, wait, did they could just do this and so on? Yeah. There's admittedly some that I don't, admittedly I don't even know which ones are necessarily in Rempy or not, but there's definitely ones where I see just wild tricks being played. And admittedly it's often the, uh, it's probably not always the most sensical thing to say, but I, I always I think of it as being like a certain type of like anime writing, like certain characters yep. that have like extremely over and they're, they're just like heavily flanderized and like overly cartoony character types, and they just, like everyone's yelling and everyone's like at, turned to eleven all the time, and it leads to a lot of like. It's the type of narrative where a glomp would happen. And so, like, yeah, the, in, in yeah. The, in those <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. There's visual novels like that where they go ham with the animations. Like, you'll see, yep. a, you'll see an, the overactive character 
uh, sprint off screen, then loop and come off the other side of the screen, and then start going faster and faster across the screen like ten times and stuff like that. And you're like, wait, yep. what the Jesus Christ? <laughs> I haven't played a visual novel where anything even moves in like a year. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it okay. can. I think it is very easy to go overboard in a lot of this stuff, and it is yeah. something that you see a lot of amateur visual novel um, writers do, where they're like, well, you know, I'm going to differentiate my game, so I'm going to use all of these like Ren P functions. I'm going to use the marquee function to make the the sprites bounce around and stuff it's just like it is a little bit web 1.0 putting dancing baby gifts all over your geocities website but making um, the, making it, it the is avatar cool. spin yeah exactly it is cool though when when people are able to strike that that tasteful balance between like taking advantage of the dynamism allowed in especially modern rmp now that it's very well documented and people have experimented with a lot of this but like really taking advantage of the medium and the things that people want to t want to see right because like the, i feel like in a way the era of the static visual novel of just like here's text and here's a sprite and the sprite sometimes frowns or sometimes raises an eyebrow like i feel like uh more and more especially in the furry vn space we are moving away from that which is really nice um and it creates it creates a really cool situation where we're seeing a lot of innovation um I like that. I've also seen a lot of, um, and I think this game does it too, of people experimenting with, um, what's it called? Uh, modular sprites, where it's like, technically the sprite on screen is actually four different sprites, but they're swapping pieces in and out to make it look more animated, which is really cool, so. Oh yeah. The more, the more I go into the assets and these things, the more I see those and I always take that as a personal dare to then just make my own cost custom sprite out of the character. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, this outfit doesn't appear in the game, but I can make it. <laughs> you can just layer them all on like a one of those like old paper like, dolls, basically. Paper dolls, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, sir, sir, you, you there's, there's webs on your cane, but then I zeroed in on his eyes, and I don't think he can see to begin with. This is. I'm just like, I don't know why the first thing I latched onto is that there's spider webs on his cane with the skull and everything. No, mm -hmm. get him out. No, you hold that. Maybe it's maybe it's what's holding the skull up. <laughs> I just don't like spiders. Those are, those are load-bearing spider webs. No! <laughs> <laughs> also, if I sound weird, it's because I've been sick three times in the last month, and I'm tired of that. So that's just where I am in life. Uh, I might be looking for at a at a persistent cough for the next three weeks, and I'll just get to deal with that because I can't I can't just not upload for a <laughs> month. The fuck? <laughs> That's not an option. <laughs> the greasy-looking beast eyes me curiously as I gasp and scoot back against the wall behind me. His proximity brings with it a potent musk that stings my eyes. The scent of unwashed animal mixed with strange herbal aromas. He wheezes out a raspy noise before speaking in a scratchy old voice that makes my skin crawl. Do you want to do this one? Do you want me to do this one? I can do um, both. But there, there would, there, there are from the build that I read, there are shockingly few characters. So you, you should decide. <laughs> trying to think if I can do a scratchy old, a little, little old man voice right now. I can, I, can, I can do it if you, if you want me to. <coughs> I don't know if I'm going to do scratchy old man. I'm probably going to do gruff old man, but... It rises. My eyes widen as I realize this creature is actually addressing me. And I can understand it. Tell me your name, lad. His tone is friendly. Or as close to it as he can manage, given how terrifying his voice is. But should I, should I really trust him so readily? I'm not sure if I want to tell him. What is default name? Is there a default name? It's no good. I have to say uh, something. There's no default name. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we I have I didn't to remember name this. the guy. <laughs> uh, hold on. I'm asking Ka. I'm asking Ka what he <laughs> calls the MC. <laughs> we're, we're gonna get the canon answer here <laughs> stupid answer <laughs> let's see he's responding right now oh 
car is typing. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> The suspense. <laughs> he has started and stopped typing 45 times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he, sa he said there is a name, but he hasn't. He, he doesn't want to specify it yet. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead and, uh, and, and just type whatever you want. That's just what I thought would have said MC. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Why not? I'm Asher. The creature's ears fall as he frowns at my response, and it's listed as his dialogue at almost. At the same time, I hear a shuffling behind him. One of the curtains dimming the light from the building's entryway is pushed aside. They're so small. There he I really stands. like his design. The, the the green cloaked one. I really yeah. like his design. Look at this little warrior of courage. Uh, so the artist for this game is Dead Stray Bear. I really like their art, and I think that their art fits like this visual novel style really well. Um, they're really good at like dynamic posing and like uh, body language in character design, and I think that's actually something that like a lot of visual novels are really bad at is like because because most of the time in visual novels when sprites just stare at the screen they're just like you know front facing arms crossed you know like that that rant sona aesthetic so it's really cool to see someone like this where it's like you have a character facing the screen their arms are crossed it's a very typical visual novel sprite but there's so much character in just like the way that he stands and and the way he's looking the the curve of his neck like if you just look at these two characters they actually have really different silhouettes despite both being you know, hunchback knolls, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so. which is a super important part of character design is you, you give them a very mm -hmm. different overall silhouette and poise. <clears throat> and that's with a lot of restrictions, yeah, because like a knoll, all the knolls probably have the same neck, the same legs, and so on. Mm -hmm. And knowing Kyle, the same ass. And so <laughs> there's so many limitations placed on your character. <laughs> there he stands looking at me with a fearsome glower that makes my stomach drop. The old beast crowding, <clears throat> crowding me turns to greet him with a welcoming smile. Oh, there you are, lad. Did get the... He's silenced by a withering glance and palpable tension. The younger beast strides past his elder to approach me. It's him. The one I dreamed of. He looks so cold and distant, and distant now, like the light has gone out of his eyes. All that remains is a smold <clears throat> smoldering bitterness that flickers into disgust as he looks at me. I'm so wrapped up in studying his expression that I don't notice what he's doing until his hands go around my throat. I reflexively reach up to stop him, but after hearing a brief snap behind me, his, my hands go limp. I slump back down, unable to move my body, no matter how much I try. I gasp and stammer in shock, my voice deeper than I expect. Wh what? Left helpless before these beasts, I feel myself starting to panic. As I gasp for air, I realize I can still move my head at least. What did you do? The smaller beast scrunches up his nose in disgust as I plead for information. He reaches for a strange leather cord that's strapped around my, his wrist and tugs at it to ensure it's secured tightly. The older beast finally returns to my side, looking down over me. A demon caller, lad. Do you really think? Of course I do, Opa. It can't be trusted. You know that. The vitriol in his bark momentarily makes me real makes me relieved that he isn't focused on me for the moment. So now I feel bad for the ragged old beast he's shouting down. He's gone, Opa. 
The thing killed him. And now it's puppeting him around like a parasite. Well, I wasn't on the wrong chit page. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think... I get the feeling that he's wrong about something too, but... We're on, <laughs> on a similar... I picked up on a similar thing of like, hang on a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> we don't know that, Tav. Not for sure. Tav and Opa. So they have names. Are they... Talking about me. I managed to crane my neck downward, unable to move a single muscle beneath it. What I see down below was difficult to swallow. My entire body is covered in thick, shaggy fur, ruddy shapes of brown that drift into a lighter, creamier blend towards my underbelly, where a simple and tattered loincloth covers my nethers. Thick, Powerful muscles adorn my arms and legs. They give way to rather large paws, each complete with a full set of dark, leathery paw pads. I was waiting for this. I was I was trying to parse whether or not this guy knows what beast men are or gnolls or what or what the the situation was because he seemed to have no idea who Tav was, but was not yep. reacting much at all to his appearance. And to, and like the biggest hint was the. Uh, Obviously, he's delirious and all that at the at that point, but the f main hint was like weeping beast man or something. Yep. Which is a, which any descriptor is a is a indi indication of otherness usually. The toned physique continues across my chest. Those bulging pectorals look at look at odds with a rather sizable hairy gut further down my abdomen jaw agape at this form, I realize my face must look similarly hairy and savage. It's strange that with such a powerful, bestial body, I still feel so weak and helpless right now. Try as I might, I can't move anything below my neck. Is this the work of that collar they mentioned? Please, I... I don't understand. They both turned to look at me, Tav wincing at the sound of my voice. Rush now, lad. Tav shoots the larger knoll a smoldering glare before Opa turns to address him. It's no danger to us now, lad. Let him get his bearings. The boy looks back to me, appraising the fear in my eyes, before grumbling and reaching to loosen the cord around his, ri my, around his wrist subtly. Slightly, I'm nailing it. <laughs> As You're he does, reading. Reading, I'm reading with your brain. As he does, I feel command of my body slowly returning to me. I gasp and reach up for my throat, confirming the caller's presence. But as I do, my stomach drops, and I get the distinct feeling that messing with it isn't going to end well. Get him up and ready. I want to make it back before dusk. The younger beast departs in a huff, leaving a tumultuous silence in his wake. The older beast sighs as he watches Tav depart, before returning his gaze back to me. Sorry about that, Escher, was it? Yeah. He perks up noticeably at my reply. I'm still not sure how much I can trust him, but he seems to be forthcoming at least. There's a million questions I want answered, and I stumble over them, trying to get one out. Where am I? And why am I... I point down and gesture to myself, hoping that gets the message across. Opa looks me over, sighing to himself. You're safe for now, lad. But you're not you anymore. That isn't a very helpful explanation. I grow a little frustrated as I try to push for a more digestible answer. Then what exactly am I? The old bear shrugs. Demon. That word makes my heart sink into my stomach. Demon? What do you mean? 
His gaze grows distant as he fails to answer. <clears throat> Hungry. The old, the old beast turns away from me, hobbling over to the workshop-looking area on the far side of the hut. I shall feed you. He mutters to himself, seeming like he's lost in a daze. I still have questions. Even more now, in fact. But I don't know how much I'm going to get out of him. I might as well try to get up. Now that I can. Climbing to my feet, I find myself a bit unbalanced as my heavy gut flops down and jostles before me. This body is weighted a bit differently than I'd anticipated. I take a few uneasy steps. My feet feel like they bend backwards at first. But my body seems to remember how it's supposed to walk on its own, as long as I'm not thinking about it too hard. I feel an added weight behind me, and look over my shoulder to see a shaggy tail emerging and curling up to support the loincloth tied around my waist. Boil and three shakes. I turn my attention back to the old beast mumbling to himself. I approach slowly, peering over at what he's doing. He's slowly stirring a pot of ominously opaque slop, humming to himself in a grumbly tone. I feel the fur prickle on the back of my neck. What are you making there? My inquiry seems to snap him back to attention, and he gazes down to survey his handiwork. Meal. He acquires a rough-looking pseudo-spoon and ladles some sort of thick, greenish paste onto an empty bowl before turning and offering it to me. Uh, no, I'm not... A loud grumble interrupts me, my stomach protesting as I get a whiff of the stuff. Though the thick fog of strange herbs still hangs heavy in this place, my nose manages to single this out as something edible at the very least. And I imagine it's been a while since I've eaten anything. I look up at his expectant expression, Oop. and it's hard to refuse. Tenuously, I grab the bowl and implement, and the implement that's now stuck fast in the offered slop. This is not going in me. I can see him squinting as he tries to survey my reaction, so I decide to take a gamble on his poor eyesight. Pretending to scarf down the meal, I end up making overwrought lip-smacking and swallowing sounds to sell how much I'm enjoying it, like I'm entertaining a child at a tea party. He seems pleased by this, relieved in fact. I can see the tension melt away when the old beast lets his shoulders drop down a bit. I try and refocus the old timer now that I've been fed, discreetly discarding the bowl nearby. Already I feel my stomach growing resentful at such waste. Thank you. Very kind of you to, f to feed a demon. He gives a soft, wheezy chuckle as he responds. Demons are people too. At least, I think so. I pause to consider how to gently pry some answers free without showing my hand. I don't know a damn thing about this place, these people, or anything really. But just coming out and saying that would be suspicious, right? Let's try and cover the basics at least. And if I'm a demon, then you guys are... Knowles, I don't suppose you have many where you come from. His tone becomes more cheerful as I keep up this line of questioning, 
Okay, so he's ready for the idea that we don't know what a knoll is. Mm hmm Where is it you think I'm from, exactly? Hell, of course. Right. Of course. And what do you know of hell? It's a realm mired in sin and cruelty, burning away while its people toil in endless misery. Oh, uh, it's Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Modern Earth. Well, that sounds about right. So, how did I get here? He tilts his head, pausing in a moment of confusion. Wasn't that your doing? You possessed young Gash here. Gash? Well, that's a hell of a name. I... didn't intend to. Is that so? Well, that's not unheard of. Oh? So there may be others like me out there. used to happen more often, but nowadays the Empire puts demons to the stake as soon as they hear word of them. Sends them back to hell where they came from. Not what I want to hear right now. Isn't that a bit severe? I'd say so. Why? But frightened people take drastic measures. Am I really so scary? He looks me over, chuckling heartily. Not as you are now. But without a collar, you might end up like the others. The callous disregard for life. The unspeakable power they wield. The wanton destruction they sow. They treat our world like a game. At least that's what the Empire says. I cringe as I imagine the sorts of demons that end up getting sent here. I'm nothing like that, I assure you. The collar ensures that. I rub at the collar as he mentions it, and I get that prickly feeling of doom again when I consider trying to rip it off. What does it do, exactly? Keeps you from lashing out. Even considering hypothetically raising a fist makes me feel a bit woozy. Like that strange paralysis I suffered will come flooding back if I try. This is... a lot to take in. Hi, lad. Must be rough. Before I realize it, his paws on my shoulder. It's more comforting than I expected. I can feel his warmth, and it unravels a bit of the tension that's been building within me. I take a deep breath, trying to get my head straight, and that's why I notice his smell again. Breathing in through my nose gives me a powerful dose of him. And it's not so overwhelming this time. Now that I'm a bit more used to it. I close my eyes and focus on parsing it. Whoa. It's like unraveling individual threads of aroma from a big ball of funk. <laughs> There's a strong, earthy smell at the core. Clearly his natural musk. But surrounding it are so familiar strands of herbal aromas. Lavender. Rosemary, vanilla, mint, sage, and quite a few more I don't recognize. And beyond that, I can smell how they're layered and the patterns they weave. I don't really have the language to describe it. It all combines together to form a complexly textured, distinct smell. And also both these worlds have the same plants. <clears throat> I need to get this crank out of the way. There we go. Oh I no, not the errant crank. The errant crank. It's the standing desk crank. I had to pull it out. It's my <laughs> way. 
I almost feel like I could pick it out of a crowd if I focused on it. New talent acquired. It's in my smell filing cabinets. I am Lego. <laughs> <laughs> One of the funniest scenes in all of Beastars is when he has his fucking Sherlock mind palace of smells. That's a physical location that he files through. When I open my eyes again, I see the old Noel much closer now, leaning up to sniff that broad snout of his at my neck. It's only now I realize how much smaller than me he is, standing at least two heads shorter. He looked so big he looked so big when I first woke up. But more importantly, he's just brazenly sniffing me. I pull away a bit, feeling myself blush, but I hope I've got enough fur to hide it. He chuckles softly. Ch 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 chuckles softly. He chuckles softly, sighing to himself before he speaks up. I expected brimstone. Like my soul's gonna smell? I realize he must have a pretty sensitive no nose as well then. It must be a knoll thing. Instead, you just smell like him, but, you know, different. It's not very descriptive, but I suppose it'd be hard, I'd be hard-pressed to succinctly describe Opa's particular smell. Our moment is interrupted by a dramatic clearing of his throat, of the throat from outside. You best not keep him waiting, lad. I take a deep breath and prepare myself. Hopefully he's had enough time to cool down a bit. I don't think he has. <laughs> I don't think he has <laughs> at all. He hasn't! <laughs> Let's see. Do do do. I want to try something. Do 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 Uh... Gash. Just say I'm Gash. I get the impression he sees right through me. Let's try that again. <laughs> so, Ka allegedly put a lot of Easter eggs in here. So I'm curious. I'm curious all the names that we can use. Yeah. I've tried a few, and I know toaster. I know some of them. I'm Toaster. Toaster. What a terrifying name. <laughs> 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 it lets you keep it. Yep. Uh, sandals. <laughs> the creature's ears the, the, fall. Into oh, this is lit. Hold on, scroll it's back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send that screenshot. This shouldn't be dialogue. Yeah, that happened the first time too. Oops, sorry. There we go. Perfect. Do, 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 do. I'm marrow. Marrow, huh? Sounds like a proper Noel name. <laughs> Here, I was worried you'd have a strange demon name like Keith. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> a little. Try Keith. <laughs> Keith? What kind of name is that? You certainly don't look very what Keithy. More like a Marrow, but if you say so. Uh, what the fuck other names would there even be? Try Jet. Uh, maybe. There, there was no sandals. Nah. Yeah. Min, <laughs> what a strange name. It sounds submissive and breedable. We're just putting in people we know at this point and seeing what it, well, what it does. Well, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> what else would you do? Nope. <laughs> now, it's, now, now it's a call out for anyone he didn't include. Now, now there's the pressure to be, <laughs> to get every, everyone in. Or it's like, what do you mean you didn't get me an Easter egg? <laughs> Anyway, this has been our intro to No Way Home. 
You can check this game out <laughs> via the link in the description to go play the game for the, in its entirety in your, for yourself, and you can see all sorts of fun visuals like sideball and whatnot that is excluded <laughs> in our playthrough <laughs> and uh, and play ahead and all that. And I think I believe if you support the Patreon, you'll get early access to the future chapters before they become to the come out to the public. And we won't be playing them till they're public because that's how that whole thing goes. It's weird to. Yep. It's not ethical to play some of these Patreon content for your YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, so this is a six chapter story and one chapter is out so far. And we're, we're going to go ahead and poke forward in the coming weeks through the, the current chapter and then see where it goes. See you guys yeah. next time. <laughs>